part grant. Uh, it's a $15,000 grant for the city to, uh, to put in a charging station for an electric vehicle. Most <coughs> municipalities in the state now at least have a couple municipally owned uh, charging stations for people that drive electric vehicles. Uh, the site, but the, uh, the $15,000 grant is contingent on the city either owning or leasing one fully electric vehicle in its fleet. And right now the city of Brockton does not have an electric, uh, fully electric vehicle in its fleet. So the $7,500 is towards the purchase or lease of such a vehicle. Uh, we've decided that the, the least uh, expense to the city, if there even is an expense, would be to lease the vehicle for three years as opposed to purchasing it. Um, if we did something like that, the, the total of payments on a, on a lease, and these can go up and down, it seems, every month, just like when you, when you do buy a car, it depends on different incentives. But the last one we did was uh, $2.99 a month for a Nissan Leaf, which would be a total of payments over three years of about $10,700, less the $7,500 that the state would give us. So that would be about a $3,200 cost to the city. Now, we would be using this vehicle primarily as a substitute because especially down in the refuse and the highway department, we're about five miles from City Hall and we're constantly going back and forth to City Hall, usually using something like an F-250 to drive uh, back and forth on different errands. So an F-250 gets about 15 miles to the gallon and uh, the average cost of, of, of an electric vehicle would be like paying 80 cents a gallon for gas. So I figured that the, the savings over the uh, 36,000 miles that were allotted on this vehicle would amount to about $4,000 over three years, which means the city would actually make about $800 on this vehicle. But the vehicle wasn't the main reason. The main reason was to put in this charging station or maybe two charging stations, whatever we can afford for the 15,000. Um, somewhere, hopefully somewhere where there's uh, uh, some businesses that would like to have um, a guest for about two hours while they're charging a car, something like a restaurant or something downtown where people can go shopping uh, while they charge their vehicle and bring some business into the town. Also, these charging stations can be uh, set up where, where we can actually charge the people to, to use the station. So they would be paying for their electricity and, and maybe a little bit extra for that, for that station. So uh, the grant is there, it's available. We're, we're towards the end <coughs> of the to accept it. But uh, I don't think it would really cost the city anything and probably make the city a, a, a little bit of money and, uh, and, and also just uh, increase our technology that we have in the city, make it a little more friendly for, for these uh, alternative fuel vehicles. That's great. Thank you, Patrick. Council, is there any council of bonds? Yes, uh, thank you. I just have two questions. Just to be clear, the $15,000, is that for one charging station or would we be able to w wiggle two out of that? Well, Councilor, it depends. It's $15,000 that they're giving us. Um, a charging station, uh, a, the good, the good one, like you, maybe um, if you can picture one, if anyone's eaten over at the 99 over in East and they have one there, it's uh, basically the same one. It, it stands on a pole and you can charge it. Something like that, just the equipment is $5,500. Now the other expense to that is hooking it into a, a 240 volt outlet that the city owns. Right. So the further you are from that, the more the installation cost is going to be. So we haven't determined the exact location where we would put this, mm -hmm. but it would probably want to put it someplace close to the power to reduce that. If we can do that, then we can afford to buy additional stations. We are going to have, uh, probably need to put in a small station down at the highway department or the recycle center because we'll be using the vehicle, but it doesn't have to be as nice as the one that we would be putting downtown or, or putting somewhere. Okay, and um, actually, when you just mentioned something, something came up. With the change of the fluctuation in uh, energy costs, like just recently yes. some of the rates mm -hmm. have gone up for electricity, would that factor into some of the projected um, revenue from this? It, it may. Um, <coughs> it, it, um, 
The 80 cents a gallon, that's what the dealers told me when I said <clears throat> because it's hard to measure apples and apples when you're measuring electric versus a gas car because, mm -hmm. but they said it's comparable to 80 cents a gallon using electric rates. Now the rates might be higher, so it might be like we're paying 90 cents a gallon now, but it's still substantially less than the cost of gasoline. I, when I did these figures saying 4,000, I was basing it on $2.50 a gallon, which it's a little higher than we're paying now, but historically over the last few years, that's kind of a, a low price for gasoline. So everything fluctuates. You can't tell, pin it down to the penny. But. Well, I, I was actually trying to pinpoint um, more along the lines of the cost of the electricity. Like to have, like you said, the equipment is $5,500. Mm -hmm. So when you tie that particular structure into the building <coughs> where the electricity you right. know, is coming from. Mm -hmm. If the uh, utility rate goes mm -hmm. up, then our costs will go up. Correct. Th that's what I'm just trying to make well, sure that I understand it, that. Right, and, and that could be reflected again on these stations. They're not free for anybody to just drive up and charge. Okay. We charge them, for whichever you know, whichever entity decides that they want to own the fees and so forth of this, would be able to recoup their money and maybe even make a little more money on it. Uh, so if the electric rates start to go on up, maybe you'd have to raise the parking rate to, to, to compensate for that. Okay. And just one more thing, I don't even know if this is something we can even figure out, but do we have a lot of electric cars here in the city? I, I've not really... Well, I don't know how many electric yeah. people own electric cars in the city. Yeah. Um, I really don't know. I, it's, uh, I know that they do sell them, and they sell them in town. And, uh, okay. and uh, you know, the, I know the Nissan dealership has a charger, and there's one, I think, down at the Walgreens on the Abington line has one now. And there's, uh, there's a couple, but they're all privately owned. We don't, to my knowledge, we don't have a, a charger downtown, so it's kind of hard to tell. But, mm -hmm. but people do buy them. And some of those people, I imagine, come to Brockton from time to time. So, you know, it, it would be a nice service for them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. I, I think this is a great idea. Um, in, in terms of the money that potentially Brockton could make as, as getting paid, how does that typically work, Pat? Is it, is it um, per fill-up? Is it like a monthly purchase? Well, is it... It's like this. It seems like the industry, from what I'm learning, cause, and I've had these, uh, some of the reps come to my office and I've talked to them. When you buy an electric vehicle, they give you a little key fob for your, for your key, and that's attached to an account, um, say your bank account or, or something like that. And also these vehicles have on their dashboard where the closest charging station is because that's a concern for people with, with these type of vehicles. They don't want to run out of juice. So um, they can just tap it on there, and that's how it gets paid. Or you can use a credit card, something like that. Uh, it'll take a payment that way. And I think some of them can even take cash, but that's not, nor that's not normally. But you can call it in. There's an 800 number. You can call in, and they'll, they'll charge you that way, too. Okay. So there's, there's a variety of ways right. that they use to... to uh are there other municipalities right now that, do, I guess my thought is, this, and I think it's a great idea and it's amenity really, it's a benefit, but, but if it can be some type of money generator, um, do other cities and towns do this and would it, and this might be not a fair question, this might be for Mr. Kahn, and you know, does it look like we would have to set up an enterprise account or something like that? That, that would be for Mr. Yep. Kahn, okay. but, but uh, you know, unless you already have some sort of parking lot <coughs> town or something like that, I, I imagine you'd want something separate. Um, they also have things where, like, restaurants can validate you. You go to eat food there, and they'll put the, uh, you put in their code, and I'll charge your car for free, that type of thing. Okay. Um, so y you may have to do something. I know the, the gentleman that was in speaking to me, uh, he was talking about they were just doing a project with Plymouth <clears throat> because they put one in last year, and uh, it was always being used, being used. So they're buying about four more. But, but they have that whole waterfront there, yeah. so they know the people are going to come. What are you going to do when your car is being charged? Go to a restaurant. Why not have, have lunch or, or do something like that? So they saw it. I know um, they've done a few in New Bedford. Uh, those are just the ones that this rep was working on. Okay. So, 
So other municipalities have them. I think Quincy has a few. So okay. they are. No, I think it's a yeah. great idea. Thank you very much for okay. coming tonight. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Councilor Moynihan. Yes, thanks, Pat. When you say station, is it, are you just talking about like one, only one car can hook up to this at once, or is it like a mul multiple? It, it ones can or? hold that. Uh, it's called the dual charging, so two cars. Okay. So you would have two spaces with, uh, with the, it can either be mounted to a building or it can be mounted on a pylon, a pole, uh, depending on where, you know, depending on where you locate it, it can, it can be on either. But normally you'd have the two spots and, uh, and this would be in the middle so you could access with either, you know, either lane. Okay, just when you were saying a station, I didn't know if you were talking about a mul multiple chargers or whatever, yeah. but... No, it's two chargers coming off of one unit. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Councilor Dinapoli. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Patrick. How are you? Good evening, Councilor. Uh, just uh, two questions. Um, <laughs> would you have to uh, get approval from the Traffic Commission to uh, install... Um, these stations and you know I, I know we don't know where they're going to go downtown or whereabouts in the city but uh, that was one of the questions okay. and what kind of a vehicle are you going to purchase it's a Nissan Leaf and uh, we're, uh, and uh, the first question I don't know that I'd have to get back to you counselor on whether the traffic commission would have to approve something like that I don't I don't know well you you know you're looking for parking spaces that comes under Traffic okay. Commission or even public safety here mm -hmm. through the City Council um, And you're gonna buy a Nissan you said it's a Nissan Leaf. That was the best uh, Value that we got we, we had looked at Priuses. We had looked at a, uh, a, a There's a Ford a Ford Focus. It's fully electric and uh, As far as having a good lease program and and the lower cost the Nissan was by far the best deal that we could find when we looked around. And they are on the list that the, uh, the vendors that we were looking at <clears throat> are on the state list too because of the state grant. There's certain vendors that, they're, that they um, will pay, you know, that, that, that are considered okay dealers to do business with. So this would be an additional vehicle that you already have, correct? This, we don't. You're, you're driving a, a, a F, F, what, 150? Yes, I have, right now, yes, I have a. Now would you a, continue a to have that? The department would have, would still have you, that vehicle. Because you need a truck where you are. We need a truck. So you, you would, okay, so now you'd have a, right. a new, new vehicle. Right, we'd have the additional truck, which I, I imagine would stay with the refuse center, because you can't do everything in a little car, but. Mm -hmm. For running errands back and forth to City Hall, uh, no, I, I different think it's things a great like idea. that. It's, it's, but you know what you have to include is you have to include insurance in this vehicle now, yes. right? So is that all? Yes. Is that all in the same envelope? The, the insurance isn't included in the payment that I gave you. No. Okay. No, it isn't. So your 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 profits are going to come down a little bit because you have well, to insure it. That's true. Okay. That's <laughs> true. All right. That's true. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I know I. Okay. It's a great idea, and if other communities have this. I don't see why Brockton has to, you know, not go with this. You gotta keep up with the times. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah. Well, thank, you. thank you. Mr. Thank, Chairman. You, uh, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hazek. Oh. Hazek and then yeah. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, Councillor. Um, it sounds like a great idea, and I heard, I, I don't know how long this grant's been going on, but I think this would be great for Brockton. It's, um, I just have a question about the lease. It's, you said it's a three-year lease. Is there a buyout price at the end? Is there, a um, there, there is a buyout price at the end. I don't know exactly what the price is. I would imagine that um, with this lease compared to the purchase price, it would be in the $20,000 range if we chose to do that. Uh, but I don't, don't quote me exactly that, but probably in that neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Councilor Stewart, thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Um, this may s this is certainly something you um, is, you may have researched. So I'm curious if you happen to know the question. Though I appreciate the fact that it's not something that you um, were charged to look into. So I understand. So gas taxes, right? So you have a a car that if you get poor gas mileage or you have a huge tank or you use premium gas, you tend to pay more in gas taxes than if you have a economical car. Mm -hmm. Um, and we know the gas taxes are used to support infra, uh, infrastructure. Yes. What's the rule around electric cars that 
don't pay gas taxes. So, um, how, and again, this is a broader question, but it just appears to me to be something that I haven't, I don't understand the answer to. So we move toward an all electric car right. system in the country or whatever, and they're not paying gas taxes. Mm -hmm. How do we support um, revenue for infrastructure? Uh, that's a good question, Council. I really, you know, didn't do that, but there are taxes on electricity, I believe. But it doesn't go into, I mean, there's- It doesn't go into fixing roads, but I don't think the city pays tax on the gas we use anyway, to my knowledge. But, I, okay. I, you know, I'm not sure about that, but I don't think we do. And this is not, again, it's not specifically about this program. Uh, I was just- it's right. Just a question. I wonder if you had come across the, the answer. I, I don't know that answer, Counselor, but I, I don't. I don't know. Okay, I, I could find out. If, you know, do some I, I can do research. research. I was just like, curious. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Counselor. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Counselor. Any other questions and concerns, Counselor, in regards to this matter? Just keep in mind, it, it you know, it is a grant for just one vehicle. Am I correct? Yes, it's for counselor, one vehicle. Yeah. And I think, um, as other councils have indicated, I think I think it's a great idea and a great opportunity for us to to be involved in it. I hate to see us pass it up. Um, some of the questions and concerns that councils have, I think, can still be answered uh, through conversation with with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Condon. Um, so, motion to approve. Pleasure. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Thank you, council. Thank you. Next order, Madam Clerk. Order that the city council hereby declare number 70 Highland Street, the Lincoln School, map 053, route 050, plot 10, available for disposition and sale to the most advantageous proposer after soliciting requests for proposals, and further that the mayor be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to dispose of said property. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Martin Brophy, Tax Treasurer Collector, James Cassieri, Superintendent, Public Property, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, and Michael Morris, Chief Procurement Officer. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, I'll just give you a quick overview, and then uh, Mr. Cassieri, Mr. Morris are both here to handle if you have specific questions about uh, the buildings involved in both in items number two and item uh, number three. Uh, number two is the Lincoln School. Essentially what we're doing here is we're asking the council uh, to declare these two properties as surplus and allow the city to uh, sell the properties. Uh, in both cases, uh, it's clear to us that the city does not have any future use of these building, buildings. Uh, they're both in deteriorating condition. Uh, however, we do think they both offer opportunities to spur some private commercial investment in the city. The Lincoln School, I believe, has been out on an RFP once previously. It was one of several schools that were turned back to the city from the school department a few years ago. Um, that's the building in number two. In both of these cases, uh, the planner, uh, Rob May, has strongly recommended that we use an RFP process rather than put them out to auction because really one of the critical factors here for the city is having a say in what the future best highest uses of these properties. You know, what would it benefit the city most in terms of their future use, which we could help determine that in RFP. And from my standpoint, perhaps even more importantly, is, the, um, is us being able to make sure that if we do sell them, that we sell them to a developer who not only has a good plan that looks good to the city, but a developer who has the financial wherewithal to complete a renovation project. I think what we want to be very careful about is not to allow someone to speculate on one of these buildings by simply buying it and sitting on it and waiting for us to redevelop the rest of the neighborhood so they can flip it later at a profit. We're looking to try to attract some good private investment and developers that would see one of these buildings as an opportunity uh, to invest in the city. Um, in the case of the Lincoln Building, uh, we are certainly looking at as a, as a future use that's residential. It's in a residential neighborhood. It sets up well the, the building. Uh, the building, I think most of you are probably familiar with it. It's very similar to the building we're in right now. It was uh, designed by the same architect that did City Hall. It was completed two years later after City Hall in 1896, um, but it's been vacant for a number of years. 
Uh, Mr. Kasseri can answer questions for you specifically on the uh, condition of the building. Mr. Morris can answer questions regarding the process. Uh, but in both of these cases, we have had interest shown by private developers in these buildings. So I think the time is right for us to get them out there. The Lincoln has been vacant, not used for years. The Corcoran building we have been sharing with the school department as a storage facility. Uh, it's not a very good one. Uh, the roof, roof leaks, among other defects in the property. Um, I, you know, in our opinion, it's cost prohibitive to try to renovate it. We don't really see another great future use for the city with it. Um, the school department has got pretty much all of their stuff out. They've set up a warehouse of their own now, and the city is in the process of getting our stuff out of the building. Uh, not too long ago, we received uh, a positive response from the Secretary of State permission to shred a lot of the old records that are in that building rather than have to store them again. So this will also be a very good house cleaning project for us. We'll be able to get rid of a lot of old stuff we've been storing that we don't really need <coughs> to store anymore that the Secretary of State has authorized us to go ahead and shred. In reality, a lot of those records have been ruined there in that building uh, between a leaking roof and rodent infestation. Uh, it's not really a pretty sight in that building right now. So uh, at that, I mean, I'll entertain any questions you have for me. Well, we have uh, you know, Mr. Morris, Mr. Kassiri, and others here that can answer specific questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Barnes, did you have a question? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, this might actually be for Mr. Kassiri okay. or Attorney Nasrallah. Um, the previous RFP that you mentioned, what happened with those? What, did they go anywhere or just projects weren't? Sufficient? Or? Well, it wouldn't apply to the Corcoran. It would only apply to the Lincoln School. Right. Uh, it was one of several schools that RFPs went out on that the city elected not to accept any of the proposals that came in at the time before my time here. So uh, maybe Mr. Morris might be able to address that. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Morris. Good evening. How are you? Uh, good, yourself? Good, thank you. The uh, Lincoln School RFP, actually, uh, we put out twice, and both times we didn't receive any proposals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, I guess I'll direct it, <clears throat> excuse me, to two, but it goes to three. With it being a school, the asbestos and things, is that an issue in Lincoln now? or? Um, we sell the properties uh, as is, so whoever um, purchased it, purchases it will be uh, responsible for their remediation of any hazardous materials. Okay, okay. Um, could I ask a question on three now, or is that for later? Mm -hmm. Three is later? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that afterwards, Councilor. Okay, all right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. You all set? Well, Councilor Moynihan. Yes, thanks. Yes, young man. Michael? <laughs> no, it's Michael. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, when you, no, they're going to put an RFP out for the Lincoln, again. Yes. With stipulations on what it's to be used for, is that what's going to, when you put it out now, as far as the city having control of actually what goes in there, is that? We're going to include uh, language uh, of the city's uh, highest and best use for that uh, property, and it's usually according to uh, the current zoning, so, uh, which is residential. Uh, so any proposals that we receive uh, would be ranked higher according to if it's uh, for residential redevelopment. No, somebody want to do some commercial in there? Would we be adverse to that, or is that something? Hurricane going? Um, I would believe so, because, like I said, as the proposal, I only have a draft currently, yeah. and it states that the highest and best use would be proposals that conform to current zoning, which is residential. So, um, all right. Well, yes. we could whatever. Somebody's coming in there with. A Who the heck? <laughs> Is that you or me? That's not me. Anyway. And All if right. a proposal uh, was submitted for uh, commercial and we did happen to accept it, of course, uh, that proposal would have to go right. to zoning. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Thank you, Council. Any other councils with concerns with Council Sullivan? <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this, this might be an inquiry for, for the mayor. I don't, thank you, Mr. Morris. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Good evening, Councillor. Um, we, we received later, late today um, uh, a recommendation from your office. It was dated today. It was under Chapter 44. It was a dividend award, uh, 339000 And I know it was for Chapter 40, our smart growth, uh, Campello area and downtown. But it also mentioned um, historic inventory needs of the Lincoln School. 
and and I just wasn't sure what that was if, if we're selling it as is. Do you have right. any? Right. Well, it's the reference, uh, and Rob May is probably better equipped to handle that. That's he filed for first reading next week. The uh, out of the uh, item that you're referring to. Uh, which is uh, asking the council to appropriate the proceeds of the 40-hour money from the from the state, which is designed to be used for planning purposes. Uh, but yes, he's specifying that because um, if the building qualified for historic tax credits, it would increase the value of the building. So it would it would improve what the city would receive for it, and maybe even more importantly, would probably spike up the interest among private developers. Uh, so in many of these um, downtown buildings, if you can establish the, uh, you know, the, it requires kind of a study that has to be submitted and approved by the state. But if the building was approved by the state to have historic significance, then it would be eligible for historic tax credits, which would make it much more attractive to a private developer. Much like Jason Corb did at the Stalin Dean building. And Same exact thing, Council. Ex ex exactly. It's, okay. And, and, and the other thing I think, as you mentioned, the tax credits that uh, potential that's real important. And what's different now than a few years ago when we didn't get a lot of interest in it is, you know, remember that this is only a couple blocks away from the Vicente's project. So, you know, that, that change of that whole neighborhood by the coming Vicente's project, we think would also increase interest in the Lincoln School that may not have been there a few years ago. Uh, but I really do believe in terms of the Lincoln, we feel that a residential use is, the, is what would fit best in the neighborhood and what's the, the, the highest and best use going forward. When we get to the Corcoran on the next item, I think they envision that more of a, a mixed use type of building, maybe commercial, maybe mixed use, but it's much more of a commercial location. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. Kassir, I just had one question for you, sir. Good evening. Hi, Council. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, in terms of, of the Lincoln, do you, do you envision, I guess, in your professional experience, I mean, I, I look at it, and I went to the Whitman School, so they're old buildings. I know when Giuliano ripped down the Franklin and, and put some new residential up in the village area, um, you, you know, I think that was a good thing. But the, the, the plot and lot size of this Lincoln School, do you envision it being a teardown with, with development, or do you think it'd be a rehab? I think it's a rehab uh, specifically f for the reasons the mayor was saying about the historic significance. I mean, to, in order to get those tax credits, you have to make that building remain th the same facade as it right. is right now. Yeah, I would picture it being uh, apartments or condos. There's plenty of parking there. Right, that was the question I was going to ask you. you think there's plenty of That's parking? That's what I'm picturing, yeah. There's plenty okay. of parking, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, councilors, in regards to this particular item here with the Lincoln School? Motion to approve. Second. Motion been made and seconded <laughs> to approve to send back to the full city council. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Um, Madam Clerk, will do item number three. <clears throat> Order that the city council hereby declare the Corcoran building consisting of three parcels, number 308 Montello Street, map 135, route 074, plot 305, and its associated Montello Street parking lots located at map 111, route 058, plot 71, and map 135, route 073, plot 304 1, as shown on the attached plan available for disposition and sale to the most advantageous proposed after soliciting request for proposals. And further, that the mayor be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to dispose of said property. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer. Martin Brophy, Tax Treasurer Collector, James Casseri, Superintendent, Public Property, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, and Michael Morris, Chief Procurement Officer. Mayor? So I think I already shared my thoughts with you on this, very similar to the last item. Uh, the only difference is being that we view the, you know, the best, highest, and future use of this would have a, a commercial type of development. It could possibly be mixed use, uh, but it's much more of a commercial location. And I think to be very clear, there's actually a total of three parcels. There's a small adjoining parcel, and there's also a parcel directly across the street that was always used as the parking to the Corcoran building when it was the Corcoran building. So for the building to have value, we need to include the parking with it. Thank you, Mayor. Council of Denapoli. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor. I have, evening, questions. I have questions for either uh, um, 
Mr. Morrissey, or even Mr. Nezzarella, because they were, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back a few years on this. Okay. So, Mike, can you come up here, please? I wanna re refresh your memory. Uh, years ago, under the units administration, this went out for an RFP. Do yes. you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. And there was, a, 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 I guess, a gentleman's <coughs> agreement to purchase this, and there was a, a check delivered uh, to the city that was never cashed. And what, what came about of this? It, I mean, because now, uh, 12 years later, it's back in here for an RFP, going back out for bid. Do you know what happened to that? I know we changed administrations. We went from uh, Mayor Units to Jim Harrington. And Mr. Nezzarello worked part-time as the city solicitor at that time. So maybe he has an insight of, of what, what happened. Yeah. That it, was, it never went through. Yeah. Um, I know what you're talking about. I just can't remember the particulars of it. Um, I believe what happened, we received one proposal. And um, if I remember correctly, the price proposal wasn't exactly what uh, the city was looking for at the time. Um, I believe. Uh, do you know city, what the figures were? Because I do. I believe it was uh, maybe $180,000. It was originally 100000 then it went to 200000 Okay. And then it was a, a deposit put on it for the 200000 Okay, well, the deposit would have had to come in with the RFP. It, was 10, it would be 10% of whatever the uh, price proposal yeah. was. Because I have the RFP. I have it here on my phone. Okay. Because it was given to me. I just, you know, I mean, I don't have a problem selling the property, sure. but somebody wanted this property years ago and is still interested in it, and for some reason, nobody knows anything. Well, I know that I put the RFP out and I conducted the process. Um, when it got to the point, like I said, of the price, um, I was not involved in that in negotiations because I believe that the city wanted uh, more money than the price proposal that was submitted and I wasn't involved in the negotiations of it. What is it worth today? We in the pro we're in the process right now of having a commercial appraisal done on it, so I don't know what the value is um, right now until the appraisal is done. What's it assessed for, do you know? I believe it's assessed for 452,000. I have, I have it right here. Is it, there's contamination on that site too, is that correct? Um, yes, I believe so. Yeah, because I was told that was gonna be taken care of under that old order. I don't have my glasses, but um, there's three parcels included, and I believe, I can't really see it right here, but um, I have a copy of the draft RFP, which I can show to you. But okay. I, I don't know what it's assessed at right now. I can't let's see, let's see if Mr. Nezzarella can refresh his memory on this. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Well, Good evening, Mr. Nezzarella. Do you, do you remember this? No, I wasn't, uh, no. When do, I don't have any uh, specific knowledge on working on this particular piece of property. Because I know Tom Pluff was the city solicitor in the units, and then Jim D'Ambrose, but you worked in the office part time. I came in halfway through uh, Mayor, you did? Uh, Mayor okay, so uh, Harrington's administration. Well, guess what, Phil? You're off the hook. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. 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 Mayor, do you have any insight on this? No, absolutely none in no. terms of that history, but I, I did just want to address one of your questions. Uh, we, we are getting an independent commercial appraisal done so that the city, you know, has a clear idea of what a fair value of the building would be. Uh, we believe it's significantly less than what that uh, current assessment is when the building's not paying taxes and not um, owned by the city, I don't think the assessors are reassessing it on a regular basis. So I don't think the current assessment probably uh, properly reflects its current condition. And that's why we're gonna, we're gonna have an independent appraiser come in and do an appraisal for us. So we will have a good idea what the appraised value is before it goes out. All right. Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar at all no, with I, the no, Mr. That Mayor, you, you weren't involved in this. This, okay. is, this is going back 10 years An ago. Ancient history. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, thank you, Councilor. Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, just so I'm clear, 
on the location. So the Cochran Building is the one with the docks, right? The, the yeah. Dock that's in the okay, right. so the parking lot that you mentioned ac across the street? Directly it, across the street. The one that it's overgrown now, right? Is yeah. That, okay, and then... It's, what it, it looks like a vacant lot right now, but years ago when the Corcoran Building was operating, that was the parking to the Corcoran Building. Okay, so now if I'm facing the building with White Street to my back, mm -hmm. what about that big parking lot? Is that part of, the, of these no. plots? Okay, so no. what's that? No, so as you're facing the Corcoran Building with White Avenue behind you, right? It's the, the there's the building, it's just a small parcel to the left of the building in between the main building and that large parking lot that you're describing. Okay, so that, that large parking lot that you're describing is under the auspices of, of the parking authority now, and that's uh, intended to be some of the parking for the new downtown college campus. Got it, okay. And on that particular parcel, we did last year get a grant from Mass Development to clean up uh, environmental hazard there. So that lot is actually been cleaned and the parking lot has plans to pave it. Okay. So that would not be included. Okay, excellent, thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilor. Yes. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> do we have any takers or anybody that's actually interested in purchasing or at least taking this to the next step? The Corcoran? Yes. Yeah, well, I, the reason we brought these two forward to the Council Councilor is because we've had multiple inquiries on both buildings by uh, by private investors, um, probably even more interest in the Corcoran building. I think we've, I want to say we've allowed four different developers to take a look at it and take a walk through. And uh, those tours were uh, escorted by uh, Ken Thompson of the school department because it's their personnel that are there really watching the building right now. Um, and part of the reason we agreed to show it to a few people that asked to see it was to help us gauge as you're driving at, was there some sincere interest in the building? And, uh, you know, we're finding there's a lot of interest in a, in a lot of property in Brockton now, and, and particularly uh, that Corcoran building, I think, will offer an opportunity either as commercial or as mixed use, but there has been interest shown in both properties. Um, several years ago, and I remember uh, when I was with the, um, in the uh, administration here at City Hall, the lot at the corner of White and Montello. Uh, several years ago, it used to have a, a, a humongous apartment building that burned down. Mm -hmm. um, there was somebody that actually wanted to purchase that piece of land, uh, but and, and put in some sort of a some sort of a, a trade school, some sort of a small engine education classes types of things. But they were looking at the Cochrane parking space across the street from the Cochrane mm -hmm. building and there was some resistance from this building and to selling that piece of land to make the uh, that that corner uh, lot basically uh, viable in the sense do you have any idea who owns that lot at that corner I don't um, I, I do know that the the parcel that we're describing directly across the street from the building it abuts this property yeah, was, that I'm was about. always used as the parking for the Corcoran building, and that's why we think it has to be included with the building. The building's not going to have any value to anyone without parking. That parcel you're specifically describing, no, but I mean, I'll be glad to have folks here tomorrow look into that for you and get the information to you. Yeah, because I, th I think uh, that was one of the issues because yeah. they wanted to build something in there that just didn't fit into the property, and then, you know, perhaps the, <clears throat> with the Cochrane being sold, it probably makes sense to somehow. Because I'm not exactly sure if the city even owns that land or it could possibly own that land or what the situation yeah. might There's be. There's another parcel along there that I believe is in, well, I'm not sure if it's that one or on the other side. There is another parcel on the other side of Montello Street that I believe is currently in a tax title foreclosure process, but is the process is not complete yet, so it's it's not available for the for the city to sell at this point. Yeah, that might be something to work yeah, to look Yeah, but I'll, I'll be happy to identify that parcel and... Uh, send you that information tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, thank you, Councilor. Any other, uh, Councilor Sullivan, I'm uh, Thank sorry. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a question for the uh, city solicitor. <coughs> Good evening, Attorney Desarella. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, it was mentioned by my colleague, Mr. DiNapoli, <laughs> that there could be some contamination, 21E violations on that property. Uh, if that's the case, is it your opinion that w we would still be able to sell the property as is or would we need to spend the money to clean it up? 
because again, if it's a if it's a a purchased via a lender or a bank, they're, they're gonna want representations that it's clean property. If it's a cash deal, it'll be a different story, but. Yeah, absent knowing what it will be, it's hard to tell at this point, but a lot of these major developers will come in to acquire that a particular piece of property and expend their own funds to clean it. And they'll have to clean it in order to get their own mortgage financing later on or to develop the property. So that, we, that try, we try to structure it so that it'll be on their nickel, their obligation to clean it. So that's going to be a condition within the RFP? It's going to be baked into that so there's a clear understanding? I haven't discussed that with Mr. Morris at this point, uh, but we will bring that up. Okay. Um, because it certainly would have to be disclosed that that is the condition of the property. Right. And, and I don't know if you've done title on it yet, but, but it's so close to the railroad tracks. Are there any MBTA uh, or I train done, easements? I haven't done title on it. You haven't done title on it at all? Okay. Mr. Morris, if you thank you, Attorney Ezra. Mr. Morris. Um, again, and just to follow up to Constant DiNapoli, um, and again, it was news to me that this went out before under Mayor Units' administration, but th those issues, the 21E contamination, because as a lawyer, a real estate lawyer, I mean, that's taboo in my eyes. Um, are we, have we in the past put that into the RFP? Was it baked into the original one? Uh, being so many years ago, um, I recollect uh, some, sort of maybe hazardous materials there, whether it was an underground storage tank or a spill, I'm not sure. Um, I have to get my file from my office and uh, take a second look at it. Okay, yeah. if you could at some point just let us know. Okay. Um, but again, at, at least everybody's aware of that, so I sure. appreciate that. Yep. Um, thank you. I just had one more question, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Brophy. How are you, Marty? Good, good. So, so the mayor indicated that um, the records from the schools uh, have been taken out of there. I know they're at the, the old Nissan Bakery on, on Frost, I mean, what's it called, uh, Foster. I know in the past we've had employee records. I know you, you, you went over there and dug through some stuff um, by a constituent. Payroll records are permanent records. So right, right, but what I'm saying is the stuff that's over there, not the stuff that's going to be shred, the stuff that's over there that we need to maintain in perpetuity, wh where do we project that that's going to be stored? Actually, some of it, um, the Historical Society is looking at some of the real old payroll uh, books uh, that they want to take them, scan them, preserve them. They'll still be city property, but they'll actually be the caretakers of them. Some of what's over there is file cabinets of actually sheets of pay history, those we just bring back to the city hall. Uh, there's also computer printouts of payrolls. So there is payrolls. presently in city hall. There's this, there's ample storage. I've got to some put that safe, stuff. some safes that I can where we keep some of the payroll records as it is. Um, so some of that we would just find space in a safe. And I have attics in some of these safes that I try and keep them up there. Okay. And what about and maybe this is to the mayor? Maybe the the bank that we acquired. Um, to credit to you, I mean, that was a great purchase. Um, would we ever be able, the Board of Health is over there in schools, but would we ever be able to use the safe over there for storage? There is, uh, we, we felt all along there was some potential storage space actually in the basement there, Councillor. The, the basement is very high and dry and there's a good amount of open space that's not being used yet. So we, there has been uh, conversations uh, with Mr. Kasiri about the possibility of maybe creating some storage space there. So I, I think that's a definite possibility. And uh, if I could just go back and, and uh, comment just on one of your questions on the, the 21E issues, I think you gave a great analogy of the uh, Jason Corp station loft. That was, he did have to do some environmental cleanup there as part of that project. And he did a great job of piecing together a lot of different types of credits and financing. Uh, but he did get some grant money and some uh, loan money combined for the environmental piece. So uh, particularly Mass Development has a fund, and if it helps, it's just like it did with Jason Corp's project, they can offer grants and low interest loans to offset uh, cleanup costs. So uh, depending on the extent of, of what has to be, uh, you know, remediated, uh, it's not necessarily, you know, a block to being able to do a deal on the building. Okay, thank you, okay. Mr. Mayor. And just point of information, Councilors, why I was harping on the records and maintaining the records is that 
Um, believe it or not, if, if you were 18 and you were a lifeguard here in the city of Brockton, you worked in the parks or whatever, all that is, is credited service time. So a lot of people, when they're closer to retirement ages, uh, reach out to Mr. Brophy, and unfortunately part of his job is to try to track down when someone worked at the Camp Palo Montello in the 60s. So we, we have a fiduciary obligation and duty to maintain those records. So that's why I was harping on that. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Council. Mr. Chairman. Council Students. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Can I, can I have uh, Council and Ms. Rilla to come to the uh, lectern, please? I know you weren't in office on the uh, question RFP item, but yeah. you heard the information. Uh, I personally know the fellow who was uh, working uh, at the real estate committee. He's on the wall up there. <coughs> and I know that he worked hard in an effort to have this come to fruition. And uh, I also <coughs> have the knowledge that the price was at 190 and then the comment was it should be an even 200000 Proposed buyer had no problem. And then all of a sudden it went south. Is there a way that you can think of when attorneys don't like this, but do you have a quick answer? Is there a way to write this for that person? I'm sorry, I didn't hear there, that. There's a wrong that occurred. There's a wrong that occurred around 12 years ago as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and uh, I'm just not sure that this is the time to bring this out in IRFP while the person is still interested. Uh, would still want to uh, come to fruition with the idea that he had. Well, I think it's probably a, although it has a relationship, a separate issue that we could discuss off record at some time and explore that. Okay, thank you very much. The short answer is because you asked, is this the time? I, I would not suggest this would be the most appropriate time to discuss a matter which I have no knowledge about, and there are, could be dozens of factors that would have to be looked at to give you a, um, a more logical uh, and fulfilled answer. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Councilors, any other further questions in regards to this, uh, this matter? What's your, um, what's your wish here? M move to recommend favorably. Second. On the motion. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, move to recommend favorably on the motion. Council Stewart. I, I wonder, Mr. Chairperson, if it makes sense for us to um, have this issue of this, this interested party uh, from 10 years ago. Uh, it seems to me that it may make more sense to, to see if the administration can reconcile whatever the issue is before we move forward uh, with uh, recommending this favorably. Then, then I would probably recommend that we postpone this particular item to our next city council meeting in the interim that we sit and meet with um, the city solicitor and, and the mayor and um, also determine what that particular issue is before we move forward if we feel that there's something that, that needs to be um, you know, rectified before we, before we put it <coughs> on to do an RFP. Um, I don't think we want to hold it up or keep holding it up because something needs to be done. So Mr. I concur with uh, with uh, even Council Stolinski and Councilor Denapoli's uh, concern. So um, just on the motion, Councilor, Councilor Rodriguez? On my own motion. Uh, but are we just basically just, uh, isn't this just an order to authorize the mayor to move forward in terms of disposing this, of this property? Uh, to me, it's a, it, it's a process that's in place and it should be followed. So if there's previous interest, uh, I don't see what, why those interests would not you know, come forward again and basically compete fairly to acquire this property. So <laughs> I mean, if this is just an order to authorize the mayor to dispose of the property, I don't see what the, the big holdup might be. That is correct. I mean, I'm just trying to fathom which direction you're through, trying to through the chair. take it. Uh, Council, you're, you're correct on that. And this will probably have to go to real estate and has to come back to city council right. for approval anyway. So, you know, we, we should, right. you know, at least move this forward. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and Thank Council you. Councilor Denapoli is correct because it will go back to full city council and then at that point at, at council next week, then it can be referred to uh, the standing committee on uh, real estate to discuss it further. So, but I think we should, I think we should move forward with it. I understand the situation, but I think we should just move forward with it in further discussion. So motion been made and seconded that it goes back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? One in opposition. And it would go back to the, um, to the full city council. Next item. Mr. Chair, 
Counselor, could I, uh, could I have a moment of personal privilege? Yes, you may, Counselor. I appreciate yes. it. Counselor, uh, we, we typically do citations at the beginning of, of meetings, and um, the individual that we're going to honor tonight, unfortunately, was driving from Boston to Brockton, so he got tied up on the expressway. I'm sure it was a hellacious ride. Um, but it's, uh, it's a fitting tribute to someone, and, and I want to make sure, because I think the agenda may go on a little longer tonight, and uh, if there's no objections, I'd like to provide a citation. Now, we started the meeting tonight in honor and moment of silence of Tommy Johnson, class of 1988, but we have an individual here also from the class of 1988, and it's Dave Wedge. And David Wedge, if you don't know, he's an award-winning uh, journalist, formerly of the Boston Herald. Uh, he's nationally known as a radio and television uh, commentator. And I've known Wedge, uh, Dave, for uh, over 30 years, West Junior High, Brockton High. Again, with Shirley, Council Azak, Class 88. Dave was the senior treasurer. I was the VP. And Dave and I went on to Boston College together. But uh, something that, uh, that has to be recognized is David has co-authored uh, a, a book uh, with Casey Sherman. And this book is called Boston Strong. Uh, and, and you should purchase it and read it because it's about the Boston Marathon bombing and really about the people that were victimized that day. Uh, the, uh, the great thing about uh, Mr. Wedge is, is he's a Brocktonian. He may no longer live in the city of Brockton, but he never loses contact of the city of champions. And I uh, would like to say that I think Dave's uh, a champion in his own right. Um, this, this book with uh, Mr. Sherman uh, has already uh, been, the rights have already been uh, secured by Hollywood, so potentially uh, a Brocktonian will have a movie made about really uh, a piece of history here in the Commonwealth. So if I could, Mr. Wedge, if you could come forward. Um, now, due to the weather, uh, Dave and Mr. Sherman have attempted several times to have a, a, a book event at the main library, and I know it, it will come to fruition in the next couple months, potentially when the snow stops. But I'd like to, if I could, read the citation. It's the City of Brockton official citation. Be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby extends its congratulations to Mr. David Wedge, a true Brocktonian and a proud graduate of Brockton High School, in recognition of his many years of providing award-winning journalism, radio, television, commentating, and for co-authoring the book Boston Strong, a human interest story about those victimized by the Boston Marathon bombings. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the City Council, Council President Dennis Ianeri, and attested to in a copy therefore transmitted by our fine clerk of the Council, Anthony J. Zioli, and it's offered tonight by myself, Council at Large, Robert Sullivan. Mr. Wedge, thank you. I just want to thank you all. I really apologize for being late. The traffic is really bad. You guys seem to be handling the snow here a little better than we are in Boston. But um, uh, as Bob said, Brockton's always my home. Uh, my dad's here, uh, Roger Wedge. He does uh, business in the city still, and a lot of my friends are on the police and fire departments. And um, proud graduate of Brockton High School. I talk about it everywhere I go, and um, uh, I'm, I'm really humbled by this. Um, it's it's pretty incredible. Uh, this has been quite a journey that I've been on to write this book. It's been an honor and a privilege to be able to do it. Um, I would like to note that uh, one of the folks that's in our book is a woman named Mary Daniel. And if any of you don't know who Mary Daniel is, she was a Brocktonian as well, Brockton High School graduate. And uh, she lost a leg in the bombings. And she's one of the stories of inspiration that's in our book. So I, I would encourage you all to um, take a look at it and, and get to know her. And if you haven't already honored Mary Daniel, I would absolutely recommend that you do. Uh, she's a, uh, an immigrant from Haiti, came here, um, got married, had a child, and um, went, she was going to medical school the day of the bombings. And um, she's an amazing, amazing s survivor. So, um, and I, I really uh, appreciate you guys taking a moment out of your busy schedule. I know you're all very busy tonight, and um, it means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Congratulations, good luck to you as well. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we'll go to item number four. Resolved that the Fire Chief Francis, Chief Financial Officer John Conant, <coughs> and Mayor Bill Carpenter be invited to appear before a committee of this council to purchase two new tower trucks for the Brockton Fire Department. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, Richard C. Francis, Fire Chief. 
And uh, council, the fire chief uh, could not be here this evening as well. And councils, this was referred back to council because we had had it before finance, I believe a uh, meeting or two ago um, for discussion. So I'm just quite not too sure if council DiNapoli wants to jump in or the mayor has something to say first, but Councilor DiNapoli. No, th thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Dubois referred this back. Exactly. And, but I originally brought this in. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you for coming this evening. Um, I, I found out the other, the other night that I believe one of the tower trucks is now out. It, uh, it was two, out of service. It's now back in. It, it, but it, it, did, it, did go out, it did go out of service for a day for repairs. You're right. Okay. So we have two tower trucks. Yes. And they were both out running today. I heard them on the scanner. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was, that was a major concern that I had that, uh, you know, this, we, we, we couldn't continue in the city with one tower truck. Let me ask you a question. I know you're not the chief. Is there a, a possibility if, if something did happen to one of the other tower trucks that we could borrow uh, from mutual aid? Is, is that a possibility? I they call for mutual aid. Council, let me just assure you that, um, you know, that I agree wholeheartedly with you that there's a critical need right now. The fire department needs another aerial ladder type of truck. And uh, the chief and the CFO and I have had numerous and numerous conversations as to how we get that accomplished within the budget constraints that we have. Um, but I can assure you that we're all committed to making it happen. Um, there is another grant application pending down in, in Washington at FEMA uh, that's fairly recent and we're going to be following up. Uh, I've already spoken with both uh, Senator Markey and Congressman Lynch about it. We're going to be following it up with, on, with them in March. We want to make sure that we've exhausted any, every effort to, to find some grant money first. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I know that uh, if we're not able to find the money elsewhere uh, by the time we do the budget, when we bring you a budget this year, we will address that need in the budget. And uh, right now, uh, Mr. Condon is getting some figures together on the option of maybe leasing a ladder truck that would contain an option to buy. And at the end of each year, in that lease, uh, we would have the option to buy out the lease for a preset number. And I know he's working on those numbers right now. So we, we are actively working on this. The chief and I talk about it all of the time. Uh, and it's a matter of uh, you know using round numbers. It's a million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is at a time that our snow removal budget is going to have a substantial deficit this year. <clears throat> so I mean, it's, it's a matter of figuring out what is the best mechanism by which the city can acquire a truck? The best one would be grant money, 90% reimbursement. We want to make sure that uh, we, we exhaust every possibility of that, but we are actively working on plan B and plan C because I think we all agree that it needs to be addressed. Okay. Um, just a little leeway, Mr. Mr. Chairman. The, yes, the, uh, the, has our fire department gone out and, and, and uh, removed snow from fire hydrants, do you know of? The reason why I asked you is, uh, I know cities and towns asked the, the governor for some aid through the, uh, um, <clears throat> the, the Army, <clears throat> excuse me, Army in, in other right. facilities. And I was watching the news the other night, the town of Hingham had uh, Army yeah. people shoveling out hydrants. Right, so we, we've, had, we've been able to get some of that assistance also. We have. I don't believe firefighters shovel out hydrants per se as part of their, their duty. Uh, I do know that in some cases we have had some of our water, sewer, and highway people uh, shovel some out. Uh, but we have been actively through MEMA <coughs> on a daily basis requesting uh, all of the help that we can possibly get. Uh, that's uh, why I informed the council on Saturday that I declared a state of general emergency in the city. There are about 180 cities and towns right now that have a state of emergency because that, Im that improves our chances of getting outside help. I will tell you that today, uh, we had three four-man crews of National Guardsmen shoveling out hydrants in the city today. Uh, this is the third or fourth day that we've been able to get that type of help with hydrants. Uh, not always three teams, a couple days it was one or two teams. 
but we are requesting a wide range of uh, support through MEMA, and uh, one of them that we have been able to get is we have had several days today. We had three four-man teams of uh, National Guardsmen shoveling out hydrants. We also were able to get a uh, tractor-trailer truck load of salt because our salt supply is dangerously low, uh, which means we're doing better than most communities that are completely out. Um, uh, so we are seeking all that help all the time. We had, right before the most recent storm, we had uh, six very large uh, dump trucks that came into the city one day from the Vermont National Guard to haul snow for us. So uh, we're, we're trying to tap into every possible resource we can. All right. thank, thank you. And to thank you for the leeway, Mr. Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Thank you, Councilor. <clears throat> thank, uh, thank you, Mayor, as, uh, as well. Now, what's your... Uh, any other questions on this particular item? Uh, do I have a motion to send it back again? Uh, to a motion to uh, recommend favorable to the city council. Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, on the motion? Right, on the motion. Go just ahead. a question. This is, just so I'm clear, this is just uh, the council acknowledging that we need these trucks, correct? That, that, that is correct. Okay. And as the mayor just indicated to you, he is still They're looking for ways to working fund it. ways to find, you know, a, a way to resolve the problem. <clears throat> so that's correct. So it goes back to the full city council again. Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Opposed, it goes back to the uh, full city council. Um, item number five, uh, councilors. Um, Madam Clerk, would you read? And then I'll follow up with it. Resolved that the city solicitor be invited to prepare before a committee of this council to review the issue of compliance with section 2-301 of the revised ordinances of the city of Rockton. Invited Philip Nazrella, city solicitor. Councilors, this item here was filed by uh, uh, city council Dubois. She did, um, uh, texted me a little bit ago and indicated that she was still stuck, stuck in traffic and was unable to uh, see her way to be here uh, this evening. So she's asked that uh, somebody make a motion to postpone this to the next finance meeting. Motion, motion. to postpone the next finance meeting. Second. second. Motion's been made and second to postpone to the next finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? That'll go back to our next finance meeting, <coughs> which will be March the 2nd. Thank you, uh, councilors. Item number six. Resolved that a representative of Stonehill College be invited to appear before a committee of this council to review the relationship between the city and the college relative to the provision of city services. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Philip Mazzarella, city solicitor, Lawrence Rowley, DPW commissioner, Francis Dillon, VP for Advancement, Stonehill College, Reverend John Denning, CSC, President, Stonehill College. Councilor Azak did file this, Councilor Azak. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, I motion to postpone until the uh, next finance meeting. Second. 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 Motion's been made and second to uh, postpone to the next finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? That'll be postponed to our next finance meeting as well. Item number seven, uh, Madam Clerk. Resolved that the mayor, city solicitor, and the chief financial officer be invited to appear, appear before a committee of this council to review the legal and financial implications of the city's contract with Aquaria. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John Connor, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Mazzarella, City Solicitor, Moises Tariente, Aquaria Water, and Rebecca McEnroe, Project Manager, Aquaria Water. Councilor DiNapoli. Yeah, uh, because of uh, the uh, gentleman from Aquaria can't be here uh, this evening, hey, I would like to uh, motion that we postpone this until the next Finance Committee meeting. Second. Excuse on the motion. Motion on the motion. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, um, this resolve again is, is my colleagues, and as you know, I, I filed a resolve a couple of years ago now, and this is becoming an absolute joke. This is, this is my humble opinion. This is a joke that the city council is being disrespected by Aquaria, our business partner, the city of Brockton. They make a ton of money every single year from the city of Brockton, the taxpayers, but yet they don't have the common decency or professionalism to come here and to give us notice timely. The gentleman came before us, and as you recall, he had canceled six or seven times prior to that. He came here, he stood here, he said, I'll be at your next meeting. He hasn't showed up. My colleague, to his credit, filed this resolve, and the guy did the same thing. They just, they disrespect us. And I'm asking, I think, the mayor and the solicitor and anybody else that can help to tell these guys to come before us. Okay, we don't have subpoena authority like the Congress does, but we professionally and respectfully ask them to come before us. We invite them. But yet this person continues to slap us in the face at the last minute saying, I can't get there. I'm sick. I can't get a flight. I'm out of the country. This is a bunch of loody, lunacy. Now you can put me on the record, Mr. Markman, on that. This is lunacy that this individual will not come before us and answer simple questions. 
Thank you, Councillor. Uh, on the motion, I, I remember last time, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Councillor Sullivan, he was uh, upset about the same issue, and it has been an issue, you know, at least the year that I've been here and years before. There was some talk about uh, possibly sending them certified letters or something of that nature. Did that happen? Who, who was to do that or what? That, that happens. The clerk takes care of that. Okay. Was she, there a receipt? Once she, con when she contacts me and, and yes, yeah, there's a receipt. Am I correct, Madam Clerk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a receipt. So it goes out certified. He, he receives it. And today's email, I think, came in uh, mid-afternoon when it was... Uh, given to me the indicating that he uh, was sick and uh, wasn't able to fly out and wouldn't be uh, able to make it and he's going to contact um, he's going to contact the clerk and uh, see about the reschedule well the reschedule for him is going to be the next finance meeting am I correct is that where is that yes so? Mr. Chairman okay so that's going to be the when was it received when was it signed received <coughs> we don't have that. Two nine, and an email came today. Yes. Yeah, don't forget, we didn't have a finance meeting uh, um, that first week in February, and they contacted me to make sure that the notification was being sent out in time, and he did receive it in time because I indicated to him the meeting would be held this evening. So, in retrospect to that, we're, we're doing our part. Right. It's for them to do their part. Right. Okay. Just checking. Thank you. Okay, motion's been made and seconded that we're gonna postpone this particular item also to the next finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? That item will go to that uh, meeting as, as well. Councilors, uh, just a couple of things just before I take any moments of personal privilege. Um, just again, a reminder, next week is city council meeting. It, it's 8 p.m. next Monday, February 23rd, right here in the council chambers. And then we'll be followed with uh, our uh, finance meeting would be the first uh, Monday in March, which will be March uh, 2nd at 7 uh, p.m. I do also want to take time again just to uh, make mention of uh, our DPW workers and our police and fire and emergency management people that have been working around the clock the last uh, uh, several days. Again, uh, in retrospect to the uh, winter conditions we've had, I don't think anybody ever thought that we would have this type of a winter all in one, all in one big shot. And unfortunately, we're still not finished yet. So. Um, I just remind um, everyone uh, and all of us, um, we're all citizens as well, that everybody's trying to do the best they can to get our streets cleared, uh, making it so that they're passable. Um, you know, sidewalks, uh, I'm sure, are going to be uh, uh, the next issue that's going to begin uh, because school is out this week, so that has given the city a little bit of a break. Um, so, but still, in any case, I, I just think they need to be, um, they need to be thanked and, uh, you know, commended for a job well, well done. If anyone... Has anything else? Mr. Council Chairman, Sullivan. if I could, just uh, just piece of information. Mr. Wedge, who we just honored, indicated to me in the hallway he's donating three books to the three libraries here in the city of Brockton and also uh, to the junior highs and to the high school as well. So I great. thought he wanted me to share that with you. That's Thank great. you. Great. Council Azak. A moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may. I would like to wish my colleague, Councillor Barnes, a happy belated birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Her birthday was on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. There you Thank go. You. Well, happy birthday, Councillor. Forty-fifth. Yeah. Right. Twenty-nine. <laughs> Any other business to come before this uh, finance meeting? Seeing none. Meeting adjourned. Forever twenty-nine. <laughs>